Hello, this is Elder Girfanov, the developer of uh, HSM Advisor Speed and Fluid Calculator. Uh, in this video, I would like to show you how I would um, calculate speeds, feeds, and de depth of cut for this stainless uh, steel part that uh, one of my customers, uh, not customers, probably users or maybe prospective customers, anyway, uh, has sent me to show me how I would approach it. Uh, he has a really low powered machine first of all and then second of all he, I think he's having trouble with the material he's got because he really shouldn't have uh, had this uh, the trouble that he's describing so I'm going to program this part as if it was a 304 stainless steel now I created already all the tool paths required for this path so I'm just going to show you how I would set the depths of cut and speeds and feeds. The first one is the outside mill profile. We are going to be using a half inch flat end mill for that, for flute, and we have to set our spindle speed and feed for that. We launch HSM Advisor and enter the actual uh, two parameters that we have in real life. We have to select the machine we are going to be using, if that is important. It is important in this case, and I'm, I'm going to show you why. So, right out of the bat, we can see that uh, HSM Advisor limits the available uh, depth of cut and width of cut based on our machine. If we had a more powerful machine, we would it would have been suggested that we machine this at 650 full flute length and 25% radial engagement. But we have a tiny Tormac, so it suggests much uh, shallower depth of cut and much, much shallower width of cut, almost nothing. And it's already pegging the, the power meter at 99%. Right here, uh, not everybody likes to run these machines like that. So all we have to do is expand this speed and feed adjustment uh, panel and slide this performance slider to the left and decrease the power consumption of our cut. So we get 350 depth of cut and about 25 a tau step over. Let's see what happens if you want to do high speed machine uh, chip thing. So our chip load is 7 tau for 3.5% um, uh, radial width of cut. Our MRR, MRR is uh, 0.68, but for this kind of material, like you're not going to be able to surpass one inch cubic, no matter what. Even if you do all out, it's going to be 0.9. We are not going to go all out. So, if three and a half is our uh, number, then we could go with that. But we don't want to lose so much, uh, so much travel. So let's try the 10% uh, radial width of cut and 0.325. Okay, we have power limit heating, uh, which is not good. It means that our uh, feed rate was limited to prevent the power from uh, machine from stalling. Now this condition we have to fix by basically decreasing the width of cut or decreasing the depth of cut. Or in this case maybe even not doing any high speed machining. Okay, we can we can do high speed machining with chip thinning at 5% radial and it's going to peg this machine, this particular machine 
and at uh, 0.9 horsepower. Let's go with that. So we have our RPM, our feed rate, and depth of cut, which is half the half the profile and 5% radial engagement. Okay, now, so we don't forget it, we can launch this little floaty window. Depth of cut and uh, just 5% step over. Let's remember this 760, 100, and 110. Okay. And this is what we're getting for our outside profile. We're going to do the same thing here because nothing basically changed. We are still going to be taking the same depth of cut. Now this counter could not be machined with a high speed motion because uh, it's too narrow, it's about 0.49 so our half inch end mill will not fit in that anyway. So we are going to use a 3 8 end mill but for that we have to calculate slotting speeds and feeds and uh, also depth of cut. So again we open up the HSM advisor enter 38 and no. probably it is going to stick out maximum 5 eighths I don't know we can have a default and again on this machine we have um, power limit heat and but we have a luxury of selecting the proper depth of cut so at everything default it suggests uh, 60 tau depth of cut for slotting and 4041 inches per minute. If you're not sure about power consumption let's decrease this uh, performance slider to slightly lower and we get 90% about 90% uh, power consumption of the available and 52 tau step, uh, step down. We're gonna go with that. Plunge rate doesn't matter because we are going to plunge into the air. What matters is the depth of cut, which we calculated at 52, almost 53. And that's it. This is our calculated toolpath. Next we have to rough and finish these pockets. Again I'm going to use um, surface high speed milling for that. We are going to use a 332nd end mill. And um, let's calculate speeds and feeds for that. I'm not sure whether it's a two flute or four flute. I think maybe it's two flute because it's such a small end mill. Again, we select a slot pocket. And again, if the tool stick out is larger than default, you have to specify it, whatever it is. Because that greatly affects the depth of cut, suggested depth of cut. Uh, so for this toolpath we have suggested 7 tau depth of cut only 
and 10,000 RPM and 9.6 inches per minute. In this case, the end mill is small enough so that now no power limit trips over. And that's fine. We just enter this speed and feed, enter our uh, step down, and off we go. Again, if your actual tool stick out is smaller than half inch, by default it's less than, uh, it's about six millimeters for this tool, your depth of cut would be much deeper than five tau. You see, it calculates the available depth of cut according to your annual stick out. If the stick out is larger, it will suggest smaller depth of cut and vice versa. So depending on what your depth of uh, tool stick out is, you're going to get a proper depth of cut. Let's go with that, 11 tau. Okay, that's our roughing toolpath. Now let's finish this. We are going to use a um, planer cut for that, and we are going to use a 332nd ball nose. Again, we run our HSM advisor, select the ball nose cutter, and here we have a different dilemma what kind of engagement we are going to use because there is a really steep and sudden plunge in here and not all material is removed by roughing toolpath we are going to be very careful because if you only specify uh, side milling cut at maybe 50 tau then we may get for example, to get the proper finish, we're going to set a 0.5 width of cut. But that may not be uh, good at all, because what, what will happen is at the bottom of this pocket, when the end mill plunges in very suddenly, like that, like this, the, the actual material may be a lot larger. So we're going to have to guesstimate the kind of material that it is going to encounter. I think it's going to be something like this. And this is what I'm personally going to use. So for this kind of engagement and this kind of depth of cut and this kind of width of cut, I'm getting 10,006 inches per minute. And let's enter that parameters. And this is the reason why we should uh, remove as much material as possible in our roughing toolpaths. Because if you can guarantee that the finishing animal is not going to meet, it's not going to encounter more material than what we specify, then no tool is going to be broken and we can uh, machine things much faster. Let's see now what we have. And this is our toolpath. Again, we in this case we had a really severe handicap of very, very underpowered Tormach 7070 um, machine. It has only one horsepower spindle rating. That is not a lot. I'm telling you, it's it's actually harder to program something with this kind of machine than with the real one because it's just not doesn't have enough balls for that well okay i hope this lesson helped the the person who was who was asking for it and thank you and bye